So let's have a little fun today and talk about emails and emails that suck. And I don't mean like newsletter emails and marketing emails. I mean like you're writing an email to a person, a human. Oh, okay, so personal correspondence. Yes. Well, I probably make probably more typos than any other human being. <laughs> Yeah. In on the planet. Now I'm, I'm joking. There probably are people that are worse, but uh, you know, so I would say that's probably the number one. Don't like make sure you spell check it or reread it, which I have a tendency not to do sometimes. Or make sure you send it to Nicolette so she can. <laughs> yes. yes. The important one. So if you've got business correspondence from us, chances are Nicolette read it before I sent it. <laughs> um. <laughs> so I mean, yes, spell check um, is definitely important, but there's something else that I'm noticing and I'm thinking of it now because, um, you know, I, 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 I've been dealing with a lot of clients over the past few years, and um, some of them aren't nice, right? I mean, that's just the reality. Some people aren't nice. We yeah. like them, but they're, they're not very nice. So how do you gently reply to emails that are not very nice when you're a professional? Like, how do you keep the tone of your email? Right. Like, I mean, you don't want to write, you're an asshole, right? <laughs> you know, like that's the, that's the first thing you don't want to write to a client. Um, Although if you know me, <laughs> I probably typed it and then had to backspace it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think it's, I think it's like anything else, you know, you, you, you want to, you want to have, uh, you want to be, you know, courteous or professional with, um, with any, any emails you're creating. You know, um, and I think you just, I don't know, to me, I just ignore those things. Like I just, okay, someone's being, an, you know, an asshole. I'm just going to be myself. Do you know what I mean? You know, uh, that's how I look at it. I just sort of ignore it. I mean, you know, as business owners, you go, hey, fuck it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do business with this person, you know, but it just well, depends. And that's a really good point too, because one of the things I like to do with a client who's being difficult when I respond to their emails um, is kind of like, acknowledge what they're pissed about you know like i you know i'm you're absolutely like i i, I know this whole like cliche the customer's always right kind of thing but um you know i i understand where they're coming from and it kind of helps like when you start the email in a place of um not defense right, right? not defense and mm -hmm. you say i totally understand you know let me take a look at that you know i mean when you kind of like um approach it that way anything you say after that they're not as on edge because you've now acknowledged right, their, their concerns. concerns and i but i think that's anything in life right well I, yeah but yeah. we're talking about emails here so <laughs> but, i mean that's that's how you would act as a human being that's that's sort of my point right because i think it's one of those things where you know you say you know, like when people, even, even when someone's arguing with you in real life, right? You're like, I hear your point. You may not agree with it, but, you know, just acknowledging that you've heard them and you've listened to them eases people for some reason. It, it just really gets people off edge. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. They heard me because a lot of times people just want to be heard, whatever it is, even if you just agree with it or it's insane or whatever the case is, they want to, they, they want you to acknowledge that you've heard them. That's why people tend to repeat themselves, you know, in conversations a lot of times, mm -hmm. they feel they're not being acknowledged. Yeah. So another thing um, in keeping with tone mm -hmm. is kind of um, how do you, like, where do you decide to be super comfortable with a person mm -hmm. and be a little bit more um, informal and where, you know, where is that line? You know, when, when do you decide? No, I don't, I don't think I'm ever super formal. <laughs> I mean, I, I just don't like, I, I don't think any of my emails are ever super formal there. They are usually pretty casual, even from a business perspective. I mean, it's, it's sort of how I am. They're usually like three words. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> a whole different problem, I think, you know, that's, but I, you know, I think the tone is never like, I'll inject like a lot of smiley faces and things like that. Like, or, you know, exclamation points if I'm excited or whatever the case is about like a project. Um, and I, I try to have me come through in my emails, not so much be, you know, business, a hundred percent business. And don't get me wrong. There are certain times where it needs to be very, you know, business oriented, but I, I think, I mean, think about this, you know, uh, the other day that, you know, we had someone we wanted to work with, we were trying to get work from, and you gave me that idea. You're like, why don't you send them a video? You know, it didn't work. They never responded, Sean. <laughs> um, but <laughs> 
Sorry, Sean, if you're listening to this, but, uh, but it, they never responded. But the reality is, you know, it, it was totally casual. It's totally like, there was a lot of, you know, it's like, Sean, why don't you ever call me? Do you know what I mean? I was being like over dramatic, but it was playing around, you know, because it's someone I know in business, you know what I mean? And I feel comfortable with, and I think it, it depends on the relationship. Would I've sent that to someone I didn't know? Probably not. Do you know what I mean? But it, it probably still, I think you, my opinion is your personality should always come across if possible, if you could do that in your writing. So I have a, a, something that I think would be valuable here. And it's typically like once I've um, had a conversation with a person, then that's pretty much the deciding factor of how email correspondence goes from that point on. So like that initial um, email is always a little bit more formal. And, you know, I, I tend to be a little bit more uptight. You know, I have, maybe I have a stick up my ass sometimes, but I, I do try to like keep everything. I'm very, I try to be structured. And but once I have that initial conversation and we kind of vibe, mm -hmm. now I know where the, where, where I can go with that email correspondence. And there are some people that even after years, I would never do that with. Like, there's just, that's not the vibe, you know? That's not the, that's not the feeling you're getting from them. Yeah to be conducted with and and that makes i mean that makes a whole lot of sense like if if someone you know if you're doing business with someone and they don't like joking around or whatever do you know what i mean and they're very serious i i guess you would you know you you want to keep things serious i don't know knowing me i'd probably still joke around but you know that's that's me you know i mean but i understand what you're saying you know you got to feel out the situation like you know don't poke the bear you know what i right. mean someone's crazy you just never know and, and you know what's crazy is that some people that you think would be really uptight um mm -hmm. you, you talk to them once and then all of a sudden they're like um you know sometimes i look back and i'm like wow i sent such an uptight email initially because i thought this was such an uptight person <laughs> and they're really not you know and i was like wow they must think i'm really uptight you know think about think about how many like high level people we've spoken to at companies, right? And even on our podcast, right? If you go and listen to our podcast and I always find the funniest moments are the ones I don't expect. Like you, someone that is very proper, all of a sudden they crack a joke and you're like, what? Where did that come from? And you're like hysterical because you didn't expect it, you know? So to me, that unexpected is sort of fun, is, I don't know, it's fun. I, I you know, I mean, but you know, but obviously they have that in them, you know, they're, they're, you know, they joke around a certain amount. So, I mean, but there are people that are just so straight laced. It's, you know, you'll never, I, I, like you're saying, you'll, they'll never have that vibe. Mm -hmm. So what else, when you're sending an email, I mean, here's a question. Do you, and, and it's not really a thing for me, but I've seen a lot of questions about it. What about sending emails at odd hours to people is that inappropriate via email um i don't you know i guess it depends on how judgmental the person is <laughs> sending it to uh, i mean you know uh, you know, i mean you know Rhonda stratton right um you know she used to be a client for us you know at a, at a company we worked for and i mean she's out of our she's out of the business but i mean her and i were both night owls so it was pretty common that she would email me at like three o'clock in the morning or, you know, two o'clock in the morning. I was still up and I would reply to the email if I saw it, you know, and, and vice versa. I mean, it was just our personalities, you know, we were up late. So, you know, if there was an email shot or something was on our mind and it, it jived, I mean, I'm, I, I also one time had a boss who was like, why are you working at like one o'clock in the morning? And it wasn't even like, it wasn't even for the fact that I was working hard and working at one o'clock in the morning. They were like, why the fuck are you up at one o'clock in the morning? Because in their mind, like I, if I had to go to work the next day, I shouldn't be up at one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> propelling the business forward right so you know i mean I, I think it just depends on how people view that you know uh, how people view the odd hours you know, to me it's weird when someone emails me at like 5 a.m like why are you up you know <laughs> like <laughs> i know who you're talking about you know <laughs> Uh, like me yeah, like you exactly yeah well the good news is if you'd like to work with us there's really only like a three-hour window that one of us isn't available so that's, that's it it's, that's true <laughs> from the hours of like maybe 2 30 to 4 30 or maybe two hours but um it's a new person that you've never emailed before is there something that like should you introduce yourself up front you know how do you kind of approach that correspondence for me, when I reach out to someone who I've never emailed before, it's usually sort of funny. 
I usually try to make it entertaining because I'm hoping that they'll go, oh, okay, this, this person's funny. Like it's worth spending, you know, 10 minutes talking to them or getting on the phone with them. You know, I usually try to make it a little entertaining, you know, but also to the point like where here's what I could help you with, or here's what I could offer you. So. Oh, I've got one. Make sure, make sure that you're not forwarding emails from other people that say other things that you may not want the person to see. Yeah. Delete the stuff, like delete the stuff below. Yeah. That happens a lot. People don't realize like people will go down and look at the chain. Like what the hell is this in, in context too? I think, I think, an, an, you know, I think another thing is along that line is like, you know, the, I, I mean, another yeah. thing that's, I, I think weird is with that, like forwarding emails is like, even if you're just forwarding it, like, but you're propelling it from you, right? Remove the forward in the address or change the subject line. Like people don't, and you're like, okay, I don't see the chain, but I see it was forwarded. So why am I now, you know, five people in, I, you know, <laughs> like, you you're not that important. You're not that important. <laughs> right, you're not that important. You know, I mean, I, and, and one would say remove the email trail. But I mean, you know, it's sort of like one of those things Then don't pretend it's from you. Be like, Hey, I'm forwarding you this email or I wanted to add you into this chain. Mm -hmm. you know, um, I guess is really the, probably the biggest thing with that. But uh, you see, you see a lot of that. Like you tell by the subject line a lot of times. Yeah, you know, with people. I've got another one. If you're if you're if you're BCC'd on an email, don't reply. Don't reply. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love people that like, hey, be, and then they'll email you and be like, hey, I BCC'd you on that. And you're like, yeah, no, I I, I read that. <laughs> like just do one <laughs> save yourself some time and just like send the email and then forward it. <laughs> So it's a different chain. So you, you, it doesn't inadvertently happen to anyone. You know, 